Prof. Uh, like I said, that uh, well, congratulations for being uh, on your appointment. We 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 saw it or heard about it uh, uh, this uh, weekend, and uh, for me, it was interesting that uh, you are acting and on rotational basis. So I then said, oh wow, it's the first, and it's interesting. But maybe to start with, uh, looking for uh, 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 looking back a bit, how do we get here? You know. Well, le le let me say that, uh, firstly, the Standing Committee of the Party is uh, elected at the Gweru Congress and uh, is having run uh, the party uh, all these years since uh, Congress uh, decided that uh, it is important that uh, we get back on track, that we re-stabilize uh, the party, that we refocus on our core business, that we ensure that our elected representatives in parliament and at the local authorities focus on the things that they were elected to do uh, by the electorate, that we uh, do everything that we can to unite the party, to reach out to everybody so that uh, we can go back to our core business. Um, and then it was decided that uh, the three vice presidents as elected at Guerre, now that the president of the party had resigned and dissociated himself with the party, it was necessary for, for us to uh, step up to the plate, to take responsibility, and to ensure that uh, the part is brought back on track and and hence that we will rotate and uh, the standing committee decided that i will go first as uh, being the most senior of the three vice presidents as elected at Guerre, so that therefore i have been mandated in the next 90 days to do all that i can working with the uh, other vice presidents, working with the secretariat of the party, working with the rest of the departments of the party uh, to address the challenges that the party face today. Uh, we got here to answer that question directly. We got here because since approximately about the 24th of uh, January uh, 22, we got to a stage where we experimented uh, about how to to lead and uh, we uh, got here because uh, we now had a situation where the collectivity the democratic collective leadership uh, no longer worked uh, as one and uh, we were unable to meet as uh, elected uh, individuals, as elected leadership, to address the challenges that we are facing. And, and we got here uh, because of some of those things. But we do not want to keep looking back. Um, what do we do from here going forward? And, and really, that is our mandate. Those are our terms of reference uh, from the leadership. And I must underline that the party doesn't belong to us. The party doesn't belong to individuals. The party belongs to those Zimbabweans, the delegates who uh, attended the Congress at Guerrero and reposed their confidence in us as the leadership and trusted uh, their party to us to manage to lead for five years and return it back to the people for them to make judgment on us, to make judgment on the things that they asked us to do, to decide whether or not they wish to continue reposing confidence in us or they wish now to uh, <coughs> put confidence um, in other people. So, so that is the challenge. And uh, what we now have to do is to make sure that we uh, take our trustship seriously, that uh, we uh, put back the party on the rails, that we do the things we agreed we'll do when uh, the members, the owners of the party, to put us in position in Guerre so that we can take back their party to them once again, uh, in the course of this year, because our term of office basically expires in you know, about June, July this year. 
so that the owners of the party can decide what to do with their party. It is not our party. It is a party that belongs to the people. Yeah, there, there is this uh, argument that uh, uh, the triple C that is today cannot be referenced to the Gweri Congress because uh, uh, there was legal issues and uh, then there was the formation of the triple C. Look, we, 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 we have values and principles as a part. Hmm? Uh, some of those values include integrity. Those values include honesty. Hmm? Uh, and if, if we embrace those values, you would know that uh, between the uh, judgment that uh, Patel wrote and uh, 22 January, there was contestation between the leadership as elected at Guerre and the leadership of uh, Umam Makupe and Monzora. Uh, and you know that what the Supreme Court decided was that a lot of things that happened between Gweru and the time of the Supreme Court judgment, uh, a lot of things that happened between uh, the death of uh, President Tsangere and, and may his soul rest in peace, uh, and the time of the hearing of, of that court case. And, and the Supreme Court was very clear that uh, the questions that it was being asked to decide had become moot, had become academic. People had moved on. But nonetheless, said because this is a political party which uh, wishes to lead this country, it was important to restate what the Supreme Court considered the correct legal position. And uh, basically stated that it is up to those who are involved to decide whether they want to wind the clock back and, and start afresh or they uh, want to continue as they are done because the case had become moot. It is very important that that judgment is clear. So the judgment allowed those who had moved on to continue moving on. It allowed those who wanted to go back, to go back and start afresh. Those who wanted to go back went back and started afresh. Those of us who didn't want to go back who accepted the conclusion that the issues were moot, moved on and accepted that the party had reconfigured itself, had reconstituted itself, had elected a leadership in Guerre and moved on. That is why that leadership operated from that time of, of the judgment, the Patel judgment, up to the uh, meeting of the National Council on 22 January uh, 2022. And it was at the meeting of that National Council, the supreme organ of the party in between Congresses, that questions were posed to, to the membership of the, of, of the National Council. And, and, and these were the questions. Uh, are we going to participate in the by-elections, which were a mini-election, which had been scheduled for March of that year? Were we going to participate or stay out? Uh, we resolved unanimously, virtually, that we're going to participate. And uh, as of the moment we're deciding, we're still MDC Alliance, where the council, the National Council of the MDC Alliance. We then posed the second question, given that Douglas Monzora and others had stated publicly that they were going to participate in those by-elections, not as MDCT, but as MDC Alliance. Were we going to continue to participate as MDC Alliance and encourage the confusion which was intended? We decided no. We're not going to participate in that election as MTC Alliance. We're going to participate under a new party name, Triple C. We therefore resolved that from henceforth, we will call ourselves Triple C and we're going to participate in the March elections as Triple C. We further decided under what banner, under what colors were we going to, to participate. We resolved that we are going to abandon the, the color red as the uh, predominant color of the party. We are going to adopt the uh, yellow color. We asked ourselves, are we going to continue with the MTC Alliance uh, slogans, Chinjama, Itiro, Kukula, Zenzo, etc., etc. We again resolved that we are going to abandon adopted those logos. And we proceeded after that meeting uh, as a MTC Alliance renamed Triple C. 
which is why we continued in the same offices as we had occupied before. Our MPs who had not crossed the floor to Monzora, our MPs who had come from what was the MTC Green before the alliance, which had come from PDP, continued as triple C members of parliament post uh, that meeting of 22 January 2022. So it, it is dishonest, uh, it is deceitful for anyone to suggest that of the MDC Alliance National Council as it met in Mazavuba in Harar hmm, on that date. That, that is the truth of the matter. So you, you, you get into Triple C and uh, I would say maybe we see less of you uh, in the Triple C uh, leading to the elections. What happened? Well, uh, it's, it's not entirely correct that you, you see less of some of us. I actually campaigned contrary to, again, the deceitful way uh, things are presented. Yes, uh, the candidate, the presidential candidate of the party campaigned substantially alone without the collective leadership. That is true. But it is also true that some of us campaigned. I, I did rallies uh, and in this documented, we're posting it on Facebook, we're posting it on Twitter, we, we campaigned in uh, in Madobo, we campaigned in Mangwe, we campaigned in Nsiza, we ca uh, across this region we were campaigning and all of those campaign politics, the, the politics of no values, the po toxic politics where we continue to be deceitful which is completely unhelpful. What, what we need is to distinguish ourselves from ZANU-PF. What we need is to be demonstrably different from zanu -PF. As a democratic party uh, that believes in democratic leadership, uh, that uh, believes in uh, collective leadership, that believes in all the values and principles of social democracy, which were always embedded in our constitution from the very beginning. And uh, unfortunately, over time, we have veered sometimes so far off uh, those values and principles, so far off those rails that we, we often become unrecognizable. When we compete uh, for toxicity with ZANU-PF, when, when we compete for authoritarian leadership, when we compete for autocratic, when in fact the difference between us and ZANU-PF should be the difference between day and night. Right? And, and, and these are the things which matter, these are the things we must uh, sort of swear allegiance to once again, to re-embrace them. And they are the things which unite us, which put us together. Those are the values, the things we believe in, the ideological cohesion arises out of those beliefs. The, the moment we appear simply to believe that we exist for the sole purpose of simply removing ZANU-PF regardless of what we stand for, then we have a problem because you then don't have the glue that ties you together. What ties people together in a political organization are the things that you believe in, are the things that you are fighting for, the things that you want to do when you are in government, the society that you want to build, the things you want to do for the people, right? to address issues of poverty, to address issues of joblessness, to, to address all the bread and butter issues, the promises of the liberation struggle, all of those values, that, that, those are the things that bring you together. The, the, the moment you don't have common values, the moment you don't profess allegiance to common values, the moment you do not uh, have an ideological red thread tying you together, th then you, you, you are nothing more than charlatans uh, questing for power for the sake of power. That's not who we are, that's not who we have been, and that is not who we established to be. Yeah, so you uh, fast forward past the, the elections and then we have the, 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 the Chabang issue recalling MPs and uh, uh, the talk was uh, Prof. Welsh and BT are behind uh, Chabang. Were you behind Chabang? Of course not. But again, when people refuse to take responsibility 
for creating the circumstances which lead to such unfortunate incidents. You, you, you then engage in witch hunting. Uh, this one there, this one there, this one is responsible for this. It's so sad and so unfortunate. Um, the truth of the matter is this, and uh, I, I hope I can say this without taking a, a lot of time. I, I as an individual, learned for the first time about the first wave of recalls from a friend who is in the diaspora. I was, I was coming out of the high court, they called me. And they actually say, uh, Nelson Chamisa has recalled people. I said, no, that's not possible. They insist there's a letter in parliament uh, recalling people. He has recalled people. I said, it's, it's not possible. Give me the names of the people who have been recalled. They give me the names of the people. I said, it's not possible uh, for Chamisa to have recalled the people you say is because some, these are some of his closest friends, some of his closest allies. It's not possible. I, I then uh, say, they say, but there is a letter. I say, okay, do you have the letter? Yes. Send it to me. They send it to me on WhatsApp. I read the letter. It's, it's, it's signed by Senghez Wachaba. I, I say, but uh, Senghez Wachaba is not the interim SG of uh, a triple C. Uh, I call him, actually, to phone and call Chaba. Chaba, this letter, surely it must be fact. Uh, it bears your signature and your name. Did you sign it? He says, yes, I wrote it. Hmm? And I say, but like how? And uh, you will do something like that without even telling some of us? He says, uh, we, we knew. He, he uses a plural. We knew that you would not approve. But we did it. Hmm? And I, I could go on to the, to the second uh, phase of recalls. And, and this second phase of recalls happens when we were uh, basically uh, in mourning for, for my, my late mark. And the people who came to the funeral work uh, say to me, uh, 73 people have been recalled. And I said, really? He says, yes, uh, the letters have gone. I again call Chaba and say to him, uh, have you recalled uh, these people? He says, no, I haven't recalled these people. So I reassure people that, no, I've spoken to Chabang. He says, I haven't recalled anybody. Uh, then when 23 people are recalled, I call him again. I call him again. But you, you said to me, you haven't recalled anybody. And his answer was, no, 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 no. I said I hadn't recalled 73 people. I didn't say I hadn't recalled anybody. I said, but surely you should have then said, it's untrue that 73 people have been recalled, only 23 people have been recalled. Right? So this couldn't have been happening. Right? This couldn't have been happening if Chabang was not his own man, if, if Chabang was controlled by me. And, and, and if you needed evidence that uh, he, I didn't control Chabangu, and I know for a fact uh, that VPBT didn't control Chabangu, he was as much in the dark as I was. The, the people who knew are the people you read about now, uh, even attacking the Gweru leadership, uh, saying we were cowards and calling us all sorts of things. Those are the people who were involved, not us. But because... Uh, we, we love to create scapegoats because we have become deceitful, because honesty is no longer one of those things uh, which we uh, value. Uh, you then have these sorts of things. Out of interest, when, when last did you speak to Nelson Chamisa? Quite, quite some time ago. Mm -hmm. It's well over maybe two months. Uh, when I spoke to him uh, personally myself. But during those Chabang days, did you guys try and say, but let's find each other? Yes, uh, this, this is the time when we're talking. Uh, but un understand that uh, by this time, hmm, there, there are fundamental differences in the part. There, there are differences uh, in respect of which we no longer had a firm. We had suspended uh, meetings of the standing committee, we had suspended meetings of the National Council. In fact, the National Council last met on the 22nd uh, of, of January 2022. And, and, and uh, 
we should not gloss over some of these dif differences if, if we are being honest and we are not deceitful uh, politicians. And, and, and these differences do arise in life, in politics. The, these differences are genuine political ideological differences. Uh, when, when some of us believe that if you, have a, you are fighting a struggle against ZANU-PF, a, a, a ZANU-PF government which you characterize as authoritarian, as autocratic, as having a accumulated centered power in one, in one person. And we say we, we must be the antithesis of this. We, we must therefore demonstrably be the opposite of ZANU-PF. We, we, we must do, while in opposition, the things that we will be expected to do when we're in government. You cannot uh, run an autocratic, an authoritarian, a theocratic opposition and then expect it's sincere, genuine people to believe that once you are in power, you will no longer believe in theocracy, you will no longer believe in autocracy, you will no longer believe in author to those values and principles which required us to be literally the antithesis of ZANU-PF, uh, to believe in democracy, to believe in transparency, to believe in accountability, to believe in making decisions based on debate and let the best ideas, the most organization. The moment you do not have that, you no longer have a political party, you actually have a, a Jim Jones uh, organization. Uh, and, and that is not what uh, the struggle has been about. And it should not be that. These are the genuine differences. And, and people should not gloss over them and uh, begin to label people as this or that. Uh, we, we should be holding on to the values that first brought us together in the first place. Yeah, I, I, still, I keep wanting to move forward and asking you about the future, but I still, maybe, I mean, you, you are now the acting uh, president for the next three months, and the Chabango issue is by the side, and, and, and it, he might decide to recall people anytime if he decides to. Are you engaging him? Let, 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 let me say that uh, the standing committee has given us terms of reference, he has given us a mandate. And I had adverted to some of those things. Uh, they include engaging the state, engaging Chabang, so that we can unconditionally, unconditionally get our party back. Uh, you have a situation where state organs hmm, uh, have not recognized the collective leadership of the party. We have to engage the state to ensure that uh, in a democratic uh, environment, in a multi-party country, uh, the state recognizes the, the organs of the official opposition uh, that exist in as much as we recognize the organs of ZANU-PF as a political organization that we know is led by Emerson Nangakwa, as open for a secretary for administration, and, and so forth and so on in, in that hierarchy. And, and, and this is what it should be in a, in a democracy. We, we need to be able to engage the two uh, so that we can reassert the authority of the party, we can have the leadership of the party that is known to us as a party is recognized. We might fail, we might succeed, but we hope that uh, we will succeed. That is the mandate we have. Uh, so, so the Chabangu issue is not uh, in the past. Uh, the fact that uh, you have pending court cases is not in the past. All of these things are current and we have a mandate to address them. We, we are not going to run away from these challenges. We are going to confront them head on. Uh, it, it is our job as politicians to solve problems, to confront problems, and we hope that we will succeed. Are you open to talks with ZANPF in terms of how the country is run? In, in, any, in any country, in any country, 
there must always be dialogue. The question is, which forum? There must always be dialogue between the opposition and the ruling part. There, there must be dialogue in parliament. Hmm? Uh, you, you have chief whips in parliament who must be talking to each other. You have the leader of the house, who is normally the minister of justice, who must be having conversation with the leader of opposition on the business uh, in parliament. You, you have local authorities, urban local authorities, 24 or so of them who are under the leadership, the collective leadership of C uh, councillors. Uh, you have a central government uh, which uh, relates to these local authorities through the Minister of Local Government. There must be continuous conversation. Uh, if, if democracy is to function, the, the moment you walk away from conversations, when you have to run the country together, it depends 24 out of 26 local authorities in this country. So it, it, it makes no sense to suggest that you can run these local authorities when central government is controlled by another party without having a, as a country, as citizens, as compatriots. And they must be confronted at the very least, at the very least, within the existing framework of governance. Uh, local government, local authorities, parliament, and so forth and so on. So, that's what we believe in. That is what we have always believed in. Otherwise, we become dysfunctional. Yeah, maybe the the other thing that everyone will be asking, say, uh, the, the, there is the acting period. When is the when are you likely to have the congress? Look, uh, b because the party has been rendered dysfunctional, uh, because we we don't even have hundred percent control of the part, because uh, we are all divided. People are pulling in different directions. Uh, it, it, it will take time for us to put the party back on the rails. But all I can say is that if, if we stick to the dictates of our mandate from Gweru, which was in June uh, 2019, our terms of office therefore expire in or about June course of this year. Uh, whether or not we'll be able to do it on time remains to be seen. The organs of the party are yet again to meet. We need to put it through the democratic processes of the party so that uh, we can get to that Congress. Hopefully that Congress will allow us to reset the clock. Will allow the, hopefully that leadership will have the war with all to survive all the punches, all the shots that are taken against us as a political organization. If we can't take all sorts of fire at us, then we don't deserve uh, to be entrusted with the leadership of, of the party which belongs to citizens. Yeah, you mentioned the, the, the talking to the other guys in the Triple C who still don't accept your appointment. President for the next 90 days is to try and reach out to everybody. Uh, the, the party do everything in our power to talk to, to use the principles, uh, the ideology which binds us together and hope in parliament. We need our caucuses in the local government authorities, uh, the ones we control, rural and urban, uh, the ones where we are uh, in uh, opposition, will do everything in our power to, to achieve that. Uh, we might not succeed. But my last question to you is, uh, uh, maybe second from last, uh, what, what does the solution in the country. Hmm? You have a government, a ZANU-PF government, which is failing, with failing in respect of all the good governance part, failing in the economic sphere, failing in the social service sphere, really in that environment. The, the electorate will need, continues to need an alternative, an alternative which can do uh, in, in delivering a better life to all citizens uh, in ensuring that those uh, education etc etc are readily available uh, to the nations for and this is the things that the people of Zimbabwe government which allows them the maximum for a party uh, which closes democratic space which uh, believes that it is literally a divine right to govern by virtue of having led the liberation struggle. It should not be that. 
should not be that. Finally, uh, if the Congress happens, are you going to contest? <laughs> uh, unlikely, um, but let that be the question that the owners of the party decide. The owners of the party should look at all of us who have been in leadership, should look at the, the new generation of leaders and say, look, uh, we believe that uh, Zendel's generation should uh, take over, should lead. Uh, it should not be for us, uh, let, let, me, let me call ourselves the old guard, hmm? to continue to want to insist uh, on leading. We have actually never done that. We will not do that. Uh, we, we wish that the people of Zimbabwe, that the owners of the party at party level, the people of Zimbabwe at national level, have the freedom to select those leaders that they have confidence in. They believe that will address their everyday needs. That, that is what matters. And let, let me underline this. It's not about any of the ambitions of the political players. It is about creating the conditions in the part which allow the membership to decide who they have confidence uh, to, to lead in what position at what time. And we should never, ever, ever think that uh, the people are foolish. The, the people are not foolish. The people know what they want. The people know their rights. The, the people know the leaders that, that they want. And, and let them choose those leadership uh, at a properly a convened Congress where people are free, they are happy, they are comrades, uh, and not uh, amid politics uh, ridden with toxicity, with abuse, with insults, and with all sorts of innuendos. That's not what we should be. We should be Democrats in words. We should be Democrats in deeds, and we should be tolerant. It ought, and uh, thank you for coming to talk to us. And of course, one thing that I agree with you is, uh, I think as Zimbabweans, we need to find each other. I don't think that difference in political views should be treated as uh, an enmity. Because I, I find that the way sometimes, you know, people insult each other because they have different point of views is actually uh, so surprising and, and saying so. Uh, so you, you just, if you believe that uh, yours or whatever you believe is correct, the other person has no right to believe theirs as well. So that there's a lot of tolerance that needs to be, you know, created. I don't know how or people need to be educated in, in terms of uh, tolerance. And I hope uh, Zimbabweans will find each other. Uh, in the next few years because uh, uh, the intolerance is uh, too much. You, you have a lot of work in the next 90 days and in the next five years trying to, to build the, 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 the opposition. And thank you for the opportunity and uh, we will call you again shortly. Thank you for having me, certainly. Thank you very much. <laughs>